All right, uh, let's do some Unreal Engine. This is uh, the first lecture on how to use Unreal Engine 5. So you get Epic Game Store, you uh, go to the Unreal Engine tab, go to the Library tab, install whatever the latest version of Unreal Engine 5 is. You can do 4 also if you want, but uh, we'll be using 5 this semester. And then uh, go ahead and hit Launch. And when you do so, it will um, give you something that looks like this. And what you want to do is click on games and click on third person and you can turn ray tracing on if you want. Uh, it's a little flaky. It's probably I'd probably recommend not doing it, but maybe I'll do it. I don't know. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna name my project Fall 2022. Every semester I teach this class, I uh, make a you know project for that semester. And just depending on what the students want, what they want to see, it becomes very different every every semester. So, you know, always feel free to ask, like, how do I do this? How do I do that? And I'll probably implement it for you live in class. And then you'll get to learn. And then your your semester's project will look different from the other semesters. So again, games, third person, turn on ray tracing or not, it's up to you. Make sure starter content is on or you're going to be very lost very soon, desktop, maximum, blueprint, not C++. So all the defaults are good, except I'm turning on ray tracing. Uh, you don't, I would probably recommend against it for most of you. I've got a pretty decent system here though. And then hit create. And then this is going to launch um, a new world. While that's launching right now, I'm gonna show you what last year's project looked like. And so here we have um, this, you can see this is, um, a world with a bit of fog, there's some landscaping in there, there's some foliage, some clouds. Um, I made it so that when you hit E, it spawns a new pinball. I don't know why, but students were like interested in making like a pinball game or something, and the other project's loading in right now. Thank you, other project. You see it started lagging. And then you got physics that run on these things, and we've got these bumpers um, that when they touch the uh, those like explosive barrel things, they kick them and then if they fall into these holes you lose points if you get the ball into the uh, scoring zone ah no 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 ah, damn. if you get the ball into the uh, scoring zone over here then you get points and I had a scoreboard up there I think I moved it uh, and so it's you know a little bit like Rocket League maybe um, no. there we go there we go there we got this we got this we got this there we go yeah, you can see it scored a point there. And then I've also got um, the ability to move these uh, these bumper kind of, kinds of looking things here. Uh, where, where are the controls? There we go. Yeah, so basically uh, the, the kind of the crudely conceived notion of the game is that you'd have like a, a 60 second timer. You can spawn as many balls as you want. The more balls you can spawn, obviously, the more points you can get. But every time a, a ball ends up in one of these holes down here, it, it eats your points, right? And so you got you got this kind of dynamic tension between you got kind of a dynamic tension between trying to score more points into the scoring zone with you know these these various holes over here um, costing you points, and then all of the flippers all move in the same way, and so uh, you you don't have a very fine tuned uh, control over the thing as well. And so, kind of, kind of a fun little game. That that was what we made in summer of twenty two. Uh, we got like an underseas zone over here, and I don't know, we got some lights and some buildings. This is what we're going to be working on today. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And here we see you can see this is very similar, right? Look, you recognize that from the the previous level. Uh, give me a show of hands on Discord if you guys are looking at this. You got uh, the third person template installed and everything. You guys here? Okay. So let me introduce Unreal Engine to you. The uh, uh, first thing to learn is just how to move around the world, how to navigate around the world. So if you right click and drag, that allows you to look up, look down, look left, look right, so on and so forth. Um, I don't think it inverts the mouse by default, but I think you can set it to inverse the mouse look if you if you are so inclined. So I'm holding down right mouse click, and then I'm going to use the WASD keys. W is forward, A slides left, D slides right, 
S moves backwards. So these are the standard controls for PC gaming. W, A, S, D, while holding down right mouse click, and that's usually how I navigate around through the world. E is up and down, uh, E and Q are up and down. So Q is down, E is up, and so with uh, those six keys, I can basically go and fly around the world and look at anything that I want. If I want to adjust the speed of the camera, there is a camera speed slider right here. And uh, I oftentimes will turn it down to one for like really fine grained work. Like you can see I'm, I'm moving quite slowly here. Um, and so like when I really want to like, you know, really, you know, okay, all right, okay. You know, do really fine work. Um, I set it to one. If I'm moving cross country, I'll turn it up to six. You can see is pretty fast, right? But the default at four is, you know, it's going to be good for now. Um, any questions about that? WASD while holding down right mouse click. If you hit them while not holding down mouse click, you'll see that these things are changing as well. Okay, so that's that's your basic way of navigating around through the world. Now the next thing you need to learn for the basics of Unreal Engine are how to move things around in the world. So right uh, right click moves the camera, left click selects things. Okay. So all of these objects in the world can be selected with a left click, like that. And you'll notice that when you click on them, you'll get these uh, these arrows appearing uh, around them. And uh, if you don't see the arrows, make sure that you have this selected. Uh, w, E, and R are the hotkeys for these three things here. So if you're if you see something weird like this, it looks like some alien sculpture or something. Uh, or if you see this, which looks like, I don't know, half quarter circles or something, you want to hit W. So W is the command to move stuff. And so when, whenever you have an object selected uh, and, and you see these arrows here, those arrows aren't just the um, X, Y, and Z axes, which, which they are. Uh, red, is, red is the direction of X, green is the direction of Y, and Z is up. Uh, that might be a little weird for you coming from algebra and algebra z is often in and out of the screen um but in video games z is usually the up axis um and the reason for that is because players usually run around in the x and y directions and the only time you do anything with z is like when you jump or fall off a cliff or something like that so what do you do with these arrows well you can click and drag on them so if you uh, mouse over one of the arrows you'll see it changes colors. And if you mouse on the intersection of the two arrows, you, you see that two of the arrows will change colors. And if you mouse over the white ball in the center of it, you'll see all three of them change colors. And what, the, uh, what that's telling you is what axis the box will move in if you click and drag. So if we've got uh, this box selected here and I want to slide it in the X direction, I just mouse over the red arrow click, left click, and drag, and you'll see that this box moves back and forth. As I move my mouse, it moves back and forth in the X direction. It does not come up off the ground, which is really important, and it doesn't slide at all in the Y direction. Now, if I were to click and drag on that green arrow there, that will slide it. doesn't matter how I move my mouse left and right, see? All that matters is up and down, okay? And, uh, so when, whenever I move boxes like this in the world, you'll typically see me slide it, you know, like this, then like that. You know, I, I typically only do one axis at a time. If I'm really feeling fancy, I will, you see that intersection there between the green and the red? I'll select that. And then this box will slide around freely in the X and Y direction, but it doesn't come up off the ground. And that's really important because your screen is because your screen is 2D. It's actually really hard to move things precisely in three dimensions at once. So if I were to click and drag on that white ball, you'll see that as I move it around, sometimes it's coming up off the ground, sometimes it's dipping below the ground. As I move left and right, it's just sometimes pulling up out of the screen, sometimes going down. It's actually kind of garbage. It's <laughs> you almost never want to grab onto the white ball to move things like. You, you just don't. Um, Control Z, by the way, is undo. Uh, like if I wanted to put this box on top of the cylinder here, 
what I would do is I'd move it in the x direction, I'd move it up in the z direction, I'd move it in the y direction, and you know what I mean? Uh, whereas if I were to try and do this using the, the white ball, um, it, like, I can't, I can't get it up on top. It's just super frustrating and annoying. Um, so just, in, in general, just don't ever use that white ball to move things. Just one axis at a time. Okay, slide in the x direction, x direction, slide in the y direction. Like I said, if you really want to be fancy, you can do the x and y at the same time. Now, you might notice the uh, the box is kind of floating above the cylinder. There's a great shortcut that everyone should know, uh, and that is to hit the end key, E N D. And if you do that, the thing just drops down to the ground. Um, if you don't have an end key, you can just kind of manually do it. Takes a little takes a little longer, though. but end drops it down. Very useful stuff. Um, you can probably yeah. And so if you don't if you don't have an end if you don't have an extended keyboard, uh, then you can right click on it and choose snapping and choose snap to floor, and then that drops it down to the ground. There's that option for those of you that don't have good keyboards. Any questions about this? Um, go ahead and try right now. Just click on the different boxes, and you know you'll see. And make sure the the select and translate. Translate means move. So when you translate an object, you're you're not doing like Spanish to French or something like that. Translation means moving an object in the x, y, and z directions. Just go ahead and you know go ahead and try putting the box on top of a, another box or something like that. And let me know if you have any questions. And then end. If you want to play your game, you can click the little green play button right here, and then it'll drop you into your game. You can like run around and uh, and play. It. See what, see what your game's gonna be like when you when you publish it. Okay. Uh, you're on a laptop. Yeah, touch pads are rough. You want you definitely for this class, just go to Best Buy and buy at least a five dollar mouse. You know, just hook up a mouse to to the uh, to the laptop. The touch pads are real dicey for. For trying to do precise work, mouses. The um, you, maybe you could use a gamepad. I'm using Xbox controller. Probably. I don't. Know. You probably make something happen with the. Uh, game controller, but yeah, the mouse is definitely what you want. Um, so, in addition to translation, there are two other things that we do primarily with objects in the world. Uh, one of them is called rotation, one of them is called scaling. So rotation spins things around. Um, so you've got a question coming in from RTG Rolf Cuevas. Um So, there's rotation around the x-axis, rotation around the y-axis, rotation around the z-axis. And if you've ever played like a flight simulator or something like that, you know their names. It's called roll, pitch, and yaw. Uh, roll is like, you know, do a barrel roll. You know, you like tilt, tilt the airplane to the left, tilt the airplane to the right. Pitch means you tilt the airplane forward or lift the nose of the plane back. And then yaw is spinning around in your chair like this. So this is yaw. You usually do using foot pads on a plane. So, um, no question from Ralph? Okay. So, how do we rotate an object? Well, you can click on the little rotate button here, but uh, there's hotkeys for these three things, and I use them constantly because it's it's kind of a pain to click on these little these little icons here, you know, every time. So, W is translate, E is uh, E is rotate, and R is scale. 
And so when I'm working on Unreal Engine, I will right mouse click, WASD around, hit E, rotate something, hit R, scale it, W, move it up, and drop it down. And that's just, that's my workflow, okay? Uh, there's lots of shortcuts and tips and tricks in Unreal Engine, but that's kind of, that's kind of my workflow. So you'll just see me W, E, and R, you know, if I need to scale something out in one dimension, I can do so like that. And uh, I can rotate it, translate it, scale it, till I get it, till I get it looking good. Okay. So uh, let's do rotation. So when you when you do rotation, you hit E, or you click on that button there. Uh, so basically, it kind of shows you, right, what uh, what axis you're gonna rotate in. So you just click and drag on that axis, and you can you see that like you can just you know however, however you want. If you want to edit it directly over here, there is a uh, a rotation uh, right here. Right. So if you want to reset the rotation back to zero or something, you can do so. Uh, if you want to exactly rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, by the way, everything is in degrees. Um, in science classes and math classes, everyone's like, radians. Radians are the the future, you know, like degrees are terrible. They're Babylonian units invented thousands of years ago and nobody but children use degrees. Yeah, okay, so that's not true. Um, degrees are actually superior to radians for a lot of applications for, for a simple reason. I can rotate something 90 degrees by just typing in 90, right? I can rotate it 45 degrees by typing in 45. You can't do that with pi over four, right? It's an infinite you know, number. You, you know what I mean? Like, you can't, like, type in 6.28 and expect it to be a full circle because 6.28 is close to a full circle, but not exactly a full circle. Whereas if you want to rotate something 360 degrees, you can just type in 360 and it's exact. Okay. So, um, right, degrees are actually the superior unit for, um, for rotations. Um, under the hood, it may very well be using uh, radians. Uh, standard libraries are usually in radians, but um, as far as like a human interface, degrees are, are superior. Okay, and then in, uh, any questions about rotation? Pretty straightforward. What you see is what you get. You can just click and drag and you know, spin it around however you want. Um, and you can't do two axes at the same time. You can only do one axis at a time. And I don't know, that's about it for rotation. And then there's scaling. So scaling is R, W, E, R. And for scaling, um, for scaling, you actually usually want to use the, um, let me reset the scale on this over here. So right here too, you can reset the scale. You, you don't scale things, honestly, you don't scale things that often in game development. You, you really don't. Scaling breaks um yeah everything like um imagine you're walking right like you got a character that's walking in the world you scale them up to 20 times the size well if their walking speed is the same as before and they're just bigger their steps are going to be like 20 meters long but they're still going to be moving as if their steps were one meter long right and so their feet are going to be sliding on the ground like this and all the textures get stretched out uh, Lord help you if uh, you don't do a uniform scaling. Um, like you do something like, uh, I'll show you how to do this in a second. Uh, but you know, let's see where my prop's at. There you go. So let's say you uh, put out a chair or something and, uh, and you don't scale it uniformly. Like it just starts looking like super garbage. You know, like that just, it just doesn't look good. Like it, it just doesn't, you know, scaling is, scaling is one of those things where like, you know, uh, sometimes you'll, you'll sometimes scale things, I guess, but you know, like, look, I have a chair, like it's a pool chair or something. I don't know. Like, you know, sometimes, sometimes you'll do it. It's pretty uncommon, honestly. 
And when you do scale things, uh, typically you want to scale them uniformly, which means you in, instead of making a weird stretched... I mean, it's kind of funny, but... Like, instead of making a weird stretched thing like this by scaling it in one direction... <laughs> I'll heal the Omega chair. Uh, in, instead of stretching it in one direction, you almost always will scale it uniformly. And that involves the white ball in the middle there. Oops. Uh, the white square in the middle there. Okay. And when you do that, it scales in the X, Y, and Z direction the same amount every time. Okay? So. Uh, it doesn't, you, you don't get those weird distortion effects. Yeah. It just, it just doesn't look good. Right. So. Um, if you do need to scale you typically will scale by moving your mouse over the white box on the inside and then just scaling it uniformly. And you'll see over here in the middle right, it's scaled two times and the X, Y, and Z. The only time you're going to do something non-uniform, which means, um, you know, you do something like this, where it's like you scaled it a lot more in the X direction than in the Y and the Z, is actually with blocks. So like a lot of times when you're making video games, you'll block out a level and you don't care if it's stretched. It's a, it's a cube, who cares, you know, and, and it's going to be replaced probably with terrain or trees or, or something. And so like actually for your homework assignment today, that's what you're going to do. You're going to just take some blocks and I'll show you how to put them into the world in a second. And you're just going to scale them uh, and move them and translate them and rotate them to make, uh, to make some walls, make a little house. And, uh, you know, it's, it might be a little too thin thick so I'll just yeah it's fine I guess and you know so you just so yeah I mean when you're blocking something out yeah scale it who cares it, you know it's it's a just it's a placeholder you know so who cares but uh in in real in a real yeah, game like you do sometimes I guess but this is not very common to scale things uh, you do you do translation all the time you do rotation all the time and building stuff scaling and yeah, just every once in a while you guys with me? And there is physics enabled on these uh, gr uh, blue boxes here. And so if you click on the green triangle, um, you'll notice that if you like put it, put it in the air, hit play, it'll fall down and do physics. It's kind of fun. And so you can you can kind of mess around with that. So you guys understand uh, translation, rotation, scaling. These, these are this is your bread and butter. Like this is, uh, if you don't understand it now, like this semester is going to be rough because like, like, you know, just when you're going around in a making a video game, you're like, eh, let's get rid of that wall. Oh, you can delete things by the way by hitting delete. I'm going to delete that wall, and then I'm going to put in a cube, and I'm going to you know, scale it out, you know, and then there, and then here, and then I don't know. Like this is this you know that kind of that kind of stuff is just it it'll become second nature for you by the end of the semester okay or actually by you know today hopefully <laughs> all right you guys understand click on things hit delete if you want to get rid of something um, but yeah translate rotate scale very important stuff it's the essentials and uh, there's there's really two more essentials to go over. And then I will uh, kind of turn you loose. Your your homework assignment for today is to build like a little a little house, like a cute little house. Okay. Um, I'll give you I'll give you lab time for it. So any of you that uh, uh, it, it can be hard to like watch the lecture and like do it at the same time. And so I'll I'll make sure you got like you know twenty ish minutes to uh, to to do it. Um, a little blurry now. out of focus okay um oh yeah i should go over the interface a little bit so behind my face <laughs> behind my face there's something called the world outliner and so all of the objects in the world uh have a name uh, not all of them have great names for example this one is called sm quarter cylinder 11 and 12 and 13 
14. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, yeah, those aren't good names. When, whenever I add something to the world, I typically give, I, I try to give it a good name. Like, you know, this is SM cube six. This is, this is the east wall. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on, like give it, give it like a kind of a cool name, you know? And the reason why you want to give it a cool name and you can rename it, uh, if you, oh, uh, if you double click on something in the world outliner, it will um, zoom to it, which is really nice. Like, especially when you have a big level, uh, you can just be like, yeah, find me the east wall. And that's why you want to have the good name for it, right? And uh, find me Theodolopolis, you know, and, it, boop, and then you just double click on it and it zooms you right to it. So you don't have to fly around and, you know, Zelda Windwalker, right? And yeah, where is that island again? You just give it a good name and, um, okay. So you can give it a name by uh, right here. You see where it says rename the selected static mesh actor. Just uh, double click on that, and then you can be called the south wall. I don't know. I don't know which way is north exactly. Okay, and you're going to be the west wall, and you're going to be the north wall. And if you hit F, uh, if you uh, hit F two, F two is the uh, Shortcut in Windows to rename things. Um, north wall, and then SM cube five. You are the east wall. Okay, and then later on, you know, in the world outliner, if you ever want to find the north wall, you can just search for it and just double click on it. So, you guys with me on this? Like, it's actually really uh, still not focusing. It's it's I mean it's not super important, but it's like kind of like. Kind of organizing a game is kind of a it's kind of important okay like like last semester at summer like students were like where did i put my century gun i'm like i don't know what did you name it they're like i don't know <laughs> it's in the game somewhere it's printing things to the screen but i don't know where it is and i'm like <laughs> you know, give it a name and then you can find it you know and, yeah, so World Outliner is nice for kind of seeing all the stuff in your world. Over here is the Details tab. Anytime you have an object selected, uh, the Details tab will pop up. And um, the uh, there's a lot of stuff here, and I don't want to, like, divert too far into it right now. But, like... Uh, things like, all right, how much mass does that block have, right? I, I made that thing bigger, so maybe I should overwrite its mass and make it like 500 kilograms now, right? Um, and so now maybe I have a lot harder time pushing it, right? Before I was just like kind of kicking it around like it was the previous size. Now it's like it's 500 kilograms, right? It's a lot harder to push. So all that kind of stuff is set over here. Collision settings are super important. Uh, we'll get more into that when we start doing collision. Collision settings are found here within the details tab. Um, and then doing things like changing the uh, material, which uh, changes the color of it, uh, can be done from here. And uh, we'll, we'll go more into that in a little bit. Um, and then you can directly edit the location, rotation, and scale. So like if you've got some far off land and you know it's coordinates, you can just be like, I'm gonna set you to 1200 and then it just appears there. So you don't have to drag you know, if you've got a house, you don't have to drag it across eastern United States. You know, you just punch in the coordinates, you know, and fly over there. And then you can double click and follow it. Um, okay, so on the bottom of the screen, a lot of you guys probably don't see this. Uh, if you, I think it's space, it will uh, hide or show the, the, con the content browser. Um, I uh, actually don't like the, the default layout. Uh, for you. Control space, thank you. Uh, I actually don't really like the Unreal Engine 5 um, default um, kind of thing. So um, what I recommend all of you guys do is go to the window menu, go to load layout, and choose the UE4 classic layout. And that's... Um, <laughs> and if you screw up your window too, like, you know, uh, that's that's it. Like if you accidentally close the details tab, you don't know how to get it back, 
where you close the outliner by accident. You're like, um, where are you? You know, it, all, all those things um, can be found details over here and uh, window world outliner there. And so you can kind of bring them back, but like sometimes like you just screwed up so badly, I, you just go to load layout, UE4 classic layout, and um, you're good to go. I've got my own layouts that I kind of prefer, uh, but just the UE4 classic, I think is easier for, for new students than uh, the UE5 default. Um, okay, so uh, do you guys all see the content browser now down here? Either hitting control space or uh, resetting the, the layout one way or the other. Okay. So this is how you put stuff in the world. It's pretty important. Uh, there's actually two, two different palettes, like an artist palette. There's two different palettes that you have to put things in the world. Over here um, are kind of the basic things. So um, you can click on like shapes and like drag out a cube. And that's what you're going to be using for your homework assignment. You can just drag out shapes and just kind of move them around and scale them. And like, if you've ever played with Legos, you know, you probably are going to enjoy this homework assignment. You know, you just drag out a cube and, you know, rotate it and, you know, whatever. Um, so the panel, the, the palette on the left hand side here uh, has got lights. So you can put little, pretty little lights out and, Stuff like that. For this homework assignment, you're just going to go to shapes and use cubes. And so you're going to assemble a, uh, a house with a roof using basically just cubes. You can use the other things if you want to have a portico with, you know, Corinthian columns and the purest alabaster marble on, you know, like, you can go fancy if you want. It's cool. And in fact, I encourage people that are creative to do more than just kind of the minimum. Like, I'm making a house that's two walls and two roofs house like go crazy you know knock yourself out it's cool um so over here this is the simple stuff and then the complicated stuff's going to be down here so if you look down here in the content browser uh you said end yes uh yeah there is a way to align it on the other axes as well so for example if you want it to snap uh east um snap margin to grid per uh, yeah, there, there's there's ways of doing it. I, I don't remember the shortcut off the top of my head because I don't use it that often. But yeah, you can make objects snap against other objects in, in different directions, and then you'll get kind of like a Minecraft uh, sort of feel to it. Let's see here. Draw objects snap to surfaces. Surface snapping. Um, surface offset, which is, oh, that's cool. So, yeah, all those options exist. And there's a huge amount of options in Unreal Engine. There, there really are. Um, okay, good question, Meg. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so down here we have the content browser, and there is a folder called starter content. If you don't see starter content, then you forgot to check that box when making your project. Um, Starter content has different folders inside of it. It's kind of too large by default, in my opinion. So um, if you uh, control mouse wheel, you can actually shrink them a little bit, make them a little more readable. So I held down control and mouse wheeled down. And so you can mouse wheel up, mouse wheel down to uh, adjust the zoom on the uh, folders here. I'm, I, I usually mouse wheel, control mouse wheel down one time, and then they're kind of the right size for me. And there's a lot of stuff in here. We'll get into them during the semester. For now, props. And so inside of props, you'll see there's tables and things like that. And in order to place an object in the world, you just click on the palette and drag it out. And then you got a chair that you can proceed to move around and stuff like that. So. Um, oh yeah, that's a, that's another shortcut. If you hold down shift, I don't know if you need to know this. 
If you hold down shift and click and drag, the camera will actually move with it. So you can kind of you know, follow it around. And if you uh, alt, hold down alt and drag, it duplicates it. That's very useful also. In fact, that one I think you probably should use for your, your homework tonight, making a house. So you make one wall and then uh, again, it's alt. If you hold down alt and drag, alt, and if I can click properly, alt and drag, and you get a duplicate. So uh, don't do a box and scale it and then try to eyeball the next wall being the same size. No, just duplicate it. Uh, you can also, I think it's control D to duplicate if you want. Control D to duplicate if you want. Control D to duplicate. Uh, so, yeah, I typically just alt, alt drag to, to make copies of things. Um, let me make a little domestic scene here. Table, a couple chairs, kind of, kind of cute. Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah. So the way that you add objects to the world is you just click and drag them out. Okay. And on the palette on the same uh, on the side here, it's the same. If you want to add a cube, click, drag it out. Okay. So for your homework assignment, you're going to click and drag out a cube. You're going to move it. Uh, around to some place inside of your world and then you're gonna scale it into a wall you see how it's like below the world now so I'm gonna pull it up a little bit and to snap it down and then alt drag make a second wall and then uh, maybe another cube here This one we will rotate and what's the I, I'm see I'm, I'm gonna get the length of it here this one is 4.5 long so I'm gonna click here and I'm just gonna manually set it to 4.5 now I have a roof that's the exact same size as the wall right um, and then, see that's exactly the right size you, you don't want to eyeball those things you know because you can be like uh, Am I off? Yeah. And so um, for things like that where you like want a precise thing, you can just come in here and edit these things directly. And then I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And scale it wider. Alt drag. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. No, zero degrees. There we go. Do you see I just edited this directly? And then I'll just make it click together like that. And there you go. That's that's your homework for today, basically. Yeah. So make a little house, you know, maybe add some props to it, you know. Maybe add a maybe add a little light, make it nice and cozy on the inside. Let's change the color here. Nice warm yellow. And there we go, we got a house. Okay. So yeah, make a little house, make some add some props to it, maybe a maybe a light. Um, there's uh, lamps and things like that, you can probably slap on it, you know. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, probably because that circuit snapping turned on. There we go. Add a little lamp, you know, whatever. Yeah, make it pretty. Add, add some bushes, you know. You guys understand? And then when you're done, you're like, all right, it looks cool. Windows key, Shift S, screenshot and you're gonna attach it to the assignment on Canvas and you're gonna post it on Discord. And so that way everybody can kind of see what everybody else in the class is working on, which is kind of fun. And and uh, especially when somebody kind of goes above and beyond and they like add a waterfall and trees and like all this cool stuff, 
to their house project, which is kind of basic and minimal, give them a, you know, clap emoji, you know, whatever, you know, emoji, whatever, reaction gif. How do you change the color of the blocks? Okay, so that's the last thing I wanted to show you today. Then I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you the last 20 minutes to just work on it. Uh, a waterfall, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, you'll, you'll learn how to do it this semester, probably. Um, give me a couple hours to make magic. But do you, I mean, do you guys see how this is kind of fun? Like, you know, if you've ever played like Minecraft, like uh, creative mode, um, yeah, uh, Roblox people, like they build things like that, right? Um, it, it's fun. Like you, you know, like you just get to like make stuff, you know? And it, you know, it's not like you have to sit there and play Minecraft where you have to like hammer the blocks and collect ore. And like, if, it's like creative mode. You just gotta, you just gotta build stuff for fun. Video games is a very creative endeavor, and it's it's a lot of fun. Hard work. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's hard work. Like if you're gonna build an entire city, like it, it takes a while, you know. But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So, uh, how do you change the color of something? So over here, you can see that there is a materials folder. So in your starter content uh, folder, there is a folder called materials, and you can see inside of here all the starter materials. There's not a lot. There, honestly, I kind of wish they would. Um, give a slightly better selection of materials because there's so few to like really play with but uh if you want to make your house out of oak you see how there's this little oak here just click and drag the oak onto the object and it turns into oak if i click and drag the walnut it turns into walnut if i click and drag the walnut floor compiling shaders probably yeah there you go so anytime you see that checkerboard pattern, it means it's thinking about it. And so there we got a, you know, like floor floorboards basically, right? And here we got walnut floor. Let's gonna compile the shader in a second. That means it's loading, there you go. And so there's, you know, four different types of um, wood, right? You got oak, walnut, I don't think you do pine, yeah, let's do pine, wall. Might take a little bit of time to compile, and there you go. Yeah, it looks pretty good, right? Like it's like, you know, quite qu quite quickly you can make your world actually look good rather than just like Legos. Like you know, this blue thing here, it just looks like a giant Lego, right? So if we want, we can. Uh, did it crash? It crashed. <laughs> yes. Uh, save often. Uh, this. Excellent, excellent way of ending the, the lecture for today. Unreal Engine 5 is far more flaky than in Unreal Engine 4. I, I don't know why, but um, it crashes. And especially if you don't have your latest uh, video drivers updated. But even with everything updated on my machine, and a pretty powerful machine, I've got a 3090 graphics card and a pretty decent CPU and plenty of RAM and stuff like that. Unreal Engine will crash on you. So uh, save a lot. Um, and that'll be the last thing that I'll show you and then uh, have it, have at it. Okay, but do you guys understand how to put materials on it? Uh, you just go to the materials tab, drag it onto the object, and it's now oak or pine or walnut or, or whatever. And um, like I said, very quickly, you can go from, do not save cleanly. Uh, Working with the animation editor, you crash a lot. Oh, wow, it lost everything. <laughs> At least with my house. Rough. Yeah, all that stuff, gone. Yeah, it, this is a great teachable moment uh, because Unreal Engine does crash a lot. Unreal Engine 5, and, and the ray tracing, this is why I told you not to use ray tracing. The ray tracing engine, I think, is more flaky than the non-ray tracing one as well. So there is a command here called save all. Control Shift S. It saves everything you've changed and every asset everywhere. It, that's like just get into the habit of just like whacking that every time you like you finish building a house or something. You just boom, Control Shift S. It, because um, if not, you'll be a sad panda. You know, like I just finished my homework. Yay! I can go outside and play soccer, and then pff, you know it crashes on you. So, um, yeah, good good life lesson right there. So starter content, um, materials, 
and you know, if you want to make the floor grass, you can do that. It looks really bad, right? Why does it look bad? Because this is one block scaled up to be like, you know, 35 meters in size. So any, so again, this is why I'm telling you, like, we don't use scaling very often because look, it looks complete garbage, right? Uh, maybe if we make it metal or something, like, it'll, it'll look better, but in general, when you're scaling things, um, they just get, like, if I put cobblestones on this thing here, um, you'll, you'll see it just looks, it just looks, like, bad. Like, that's, it's just bad. Like, no. Like, no game company in existence would allow you to do that, you know, so... Uh, solid colors are okay on blocks like that. Um, solid metals, no, they still look bad. You know, all the pits are all stretched out. Uh, yeah, maybe brushed nickel, something innocuous, you know, maybe is okay. I'm just gonna make everything brushed nickel. Yeah. Make every object in the world brushed nickel. And since I got ray tracing on, it should actually look kind of cool. Uh, ray tracing will do re reflections for you. So if you want, uh, that might be kind of fun for you. Just um, you know, add materials on everything, make them make them look pretty. The def these default materials, you know, kinda not very professional looking, right? And Control Shift S, save all, and then when I hit play, yeah, everything's all shiny now. Looks a lot better. Okay, so that's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, like I said, that's why we don't use scaling because it stretches the textures and. It, once you know how to mess with the materials, you can adjust the tiling on a material and kind of correct for it. It's still kind of a pain, though. So, um, yeah, in general, you just don't, you don't usually scale things. Okay, any questions? Do you guys think you can all uh, successfully build a house using cubes? <laughs> Translate, scale it, rotate the roof, maybe put a point light out there. Is that is that doable? Do you feel like you have the skills needed to succeed? Challenge accepted. And uh, for those of you that are overachievers, I will award extra credit if you do something uh, above and beyond, right? If, uh, if I look at your picture and go, oh, that's cool, then uh, I'll give you an 11 out of 10 on the assignment, okay? So you don't have to think, oh, it's a lame assignment, I'm just going to build a little paper house. Nah, if you, if you impress me, and that's completely uh, subjective and open to interpretation, but if you impress me, I'll give you an 11 out of 10 on it. If you do the work, you get a 10 out of 10, and if you do like a super half-assed job, less than 10 out of 10. But I tend to give 10 out of 10s just when people kind of like do, do their job. You know? So yeah, so there's going to be an assignment on Canvas, and you're going to attach your screenshot of your house there. And then you also post it on Discord. So um, this channel right here for Discord, once you finish your house, screenshot, put the screenshot here as well. Because I feel like it builds community when, when people can see what their fellow students are working on, right? Like, oh, that's cool. Or, or oh, that's a great idea. Look at that. He, you know, uh, you know, Ben Court like had six lights in a circle to make a chandelier. Oh, that's really cool. I, I shouldn't, I, I should have thought of that myself, right? And so there's, there's a lot of value in seeing other people do art, which is really what we're doing here, and seeing the techniques they use, and, and maybe they did something that you don't know how to do. Like, how did you add fog to the world, you know? Uh, and then they can just answer and tell you, right? So um, I want to create a sense of community in this class, and, and, and a big part of that is just being able to look at each other's screenshots. And, and again, like I said, give clap emojis or whatever kind of positive feedback you want when... Uh, you see something cool like last 
last semester of her summer, people were doing like lava, fire, volcano houses and things like that. Hobbit holes would be cool. House of Cards a house? Uh, yeah, sure. How do you copy an item? Uh, well, you can always just control C, control V if you want. Uh, control D is the, uh, control D is for duplicate. Uh, the shortcut though is holding down alt. If you just alt and click on the arrow, then you can create, um, a series of giant iron, not iron, nickel, sorry, ingots in this guy. Shift S, and I am done for the day. So you got the remaining time to work on it. Do you need to make an Epic Games account first? I don't think you need to. I probably would, though. So um, if you're going to buy any of the assets, like on the marketplace, um, you're going to need a store so that it associates the assets with your account. Um, so yeah, short, short answer, I would say yes. Um, I would definitely get an Epic Store account. And then I would buy the free stuff. Because the free stuff is not free. Like, it's actually not one of those things where, like, like oh, it's free. Not, like, it, they actually do charge money. Like, and sometimes students, like, don't buy the free stuff. And then the next semester or the next month, I'm like, hey, let's go use those castle assets. And they're like, oh, we forgot to buy them. And then I'm like, oh, I can't do it now because, you know, it's $40 now. What you're telling me is you're not cracked at Fortnite. That's fine. It's okay. Yeah, Hobbit holes work. Um, yep, I'm, I'm leaving it vague and, you know, just build a house. Okay. Build this house if you want. All right. So unless there's any further questions, I'm going to turn off the stream now, the recording now, and I will hang out for the next you know, 10 minutes or so, 20 minutes, and uh, answer any questions you guys have. And I'm going to go right now put up the assignment on Canvas, and I'll see you guys on Thursday at 1 o'clock. Peace out.